Hi folks, I'm Steve from Number 12 Cider and this is Colin. We're uh, here to talk about a, a new subject today, fortification. Uh, what, is, what does it mean to fortify cider? Uh, little story, uh, when we first started making cider 25 plus years ago, there wasn't a lot of literature on how to make cider, but what you could find, as a matter of course, just about everybody put sugar in the apple juice before they fermented it. I found that a little odd, but um, uh, over the years, uh, we've kind of come to a, like a different appreciation of uh, fortifying cider. Uh, right, Colin? So it turns out that fortifying cider, which we didn't know at the time, is a choice. Yeah. And it's a strategy to make your cider different. Uh, so by adding, by adding sweetness to it and fermenting it out, you're adding alcohol to your cider making it more interesting or perhaps making it better. Yeah, but not, but it does usually you don't need that for just apple juice, right? Right, right. and we would strongly recommend only fortifying if you're doing it intentionally, not to just do it out of habit like you described, but to have it uh, as a tool in your cider toolbox to be able to make more interesting products. And that said, there are a lot of great examples of fantastic fortified ciders, right? Right. One example of a fantastic fortified cider right in front of us here is a product we make here at number 12 called Barrel 44. Cheers. Cheers. That's a delicious product. Oh, it's fantastic. It has a little bit of a, a booziness to it. Yes, um, you feel and, that, don't you? And you also taste the, the bourbon barrel. Yeah. So how, how is this generally made as a fortified cider? The reason we fortified that or made the alcohol, we increased the alcohol in this case uh, from about a seven, six and a half percent cider, seven-ish, uh, up to almost 10. So we added uh, several points to this. Uh, and the reason being, uh, we barrel aged that in bourbon barrels, which as you know, bourbon's a fairly strong flavor. Uh, and sitting six months in an oak barrel gives you a fair amount of oaky character. Uh, and we just felt like initially when we made that product that the lower ABV, six and a half percent, was really not enough to, to stand up to that character. So we decided to do some testing, and we found that about a 10%, 9.5%, 10% product was really the, the sweet spot, forgive the pun, uh, to, to make that into something uh, really good. Well, and I'll add just a couple of things on that story about Barrel 44. That's sort of fashioned after a style of uh, cider making called New England cider. And in, in old New England, they used to fortify their ciders in the barrel uh, by adding uh, higher sugar products from, from the, the farms, such as maple syrup or other things. And uh, that's, that's one reason it was very deliberate and intentional. And the other reason is oftentimes when we uh, barrel age products, right Colin, uh, the, the, the barrels are not as sanitary as, as stainless steel, for example, or glass, for example. And it is often a, little, a good idea to add a little alcohol uh, you know, to products you're putting in the barrel to help them uh, uh, not avoid getting contaminated sure. by like a surface yeast that could, you know, materially yeah. impact the flavor, right? Higher alcohol will kill more bacteria just by nature. So, yeah. so uh, that's a good strategy. What else, what else are good examples so, yeah, that, so we, one, that we use for, for fortifying? One, one method is to add sweetness or sugar. In this case, we just did table sugar um, to fortify. You can also add anything that's a higher, well, basically anything that's a higher ABV or will create that is a way to fortify. So in this case, we did sugar. Uh, this product right here is uh, something we have in our tap room called Redbird. It's a, it's a cider wine blend, uh, a vin de palm, if you want to say. Uh, and basically what that is, is we blended some higher alcohol wine, which was about a, it was a Bordeaux that was about 15% alcohol with a little bit lower alcohol uh, cider. So in the end, you know, we have some, we added about a point and a half to that. So it became from a low 6% to about a seven and a half percent. And you got a little color change from the wine. You get a little bit of ABV change, just makes it a better product. And you get a little bit of that, uh, that grape tannin from the red wine. Yeah. It tastes, it tastes more wine-like. It's almost like a rosé. It's a very delicious product. Yeah. And what's the other one here? So the other one is uh, something that's, uh, it's called a pomo, which is uh, traditional, 
uh, French dessert wine. Uh, and in our case, uh, what we did is we took a uh, apple brandy that we had distilled um, from our cider, uh, and that turns out to be about a 43% alcohol, yeah. so very high. Uh, but we blend that down, and, and traditional Pommel usually blends a brandy with a lightly fermented cider. Uh, so in the end, what we have here is um, something about 16%. It's a pretty high ABV, it's a dessert wine, it's kind of a sipper. You definitely taste the booze. Because it's a partially fermented cider, you have a little bit of sweetness still. Um, it's a very nice product. The traditional pomos are barrel aged. Yes. Another good reason to go with a higher alcohol, as we discussed. Right, right, exactly. So there's lots of ways to do it. You know, whether you do it with sugar, whether you do it with other products like a, a higher ABV wine or higher ABV spirit, uh, you can be creative with this process. Yeah, another fun thing that we, we've done before we demonstrate uh, just basically how to do it, uh, which is pretty simple, but an, another fun thing that we've done is add honey. Sure. Which makes? You get a sizer in that sizer. case, right? If you haven't heard, C-Y-S-E-R, sizer is a, is a word for a cider mead blend. Right. And uh, if you haven't gotten into meads or, or trying different honeys, there's a whole new world out there for you. And and for us, uh, we've tried a lot of different honeys, and, and occasionally we've taken ciders and blended them with honey, have that honey ferment out, and create a really wonderful different uh, uh, product called a sizer with a little bit of that honey essence. So, And you can do honey. Uh, we talked about just table sugar, in this case, white granulated sugar. Uh, you know, we've used brown sugar before. We use uh, fruit concentrates or fruit juices. Mm -hmm. You could even add dried fruit. Uh, you know, let some dried fruit float in here. That's kind of like your New, New England style yeah. you're talking about. Yep. Uh, any of those things add a little bit of fermentable sweetness, which will then eventually, as the yeast reacts, it'll eventually raise the ABV. Yeah, cool. Well, how about we uh, do a demonstration now? Let's show, do that. How to do it. Let's All do right. that. All right. So we're going to take a uh, we're going to take some of the apple, the cider. This is a this is a finished cider, right? Finished cider, already fermented out, and, um, and we have one gallon. And we're we're going. We want to bump the alcohol level of this one gallon of finished cider by one percentage point, right? Right. And and just as a general rule, uh, about a pound of sugar added to six gallons of cider, so like a six-gallon carboy, about one pound of sugar will raise the ABV one percent. So you might go from a six percent cider to a seven percent cider by adding one pound of sugar per six gallons. So we have a gallon here, what does that mean? Well, yeah, so we had to scale it down, work the ratios, do your math, uh, and we ended up with about two and two thirds pounds, two and two thirds ounces, sorry, yeah. of sugar for the one gallon of yeah. cider. One sixth of a pound. One sixth of a pound, right. there you go. You, right. wanna, you wanna run some in here so for me? So let's do that. So. Yeah. Um, so we've got the sugar pre-measured over here, just to save a little time. And uh, we're gonna siphon out a little bit of juice in there so we can melt it before we put it back in. Uh, you know, could you, Steve, if you wanted to, just pour the sugar directly into the carboy? Sure you can, sure you can. Yeah. Uh, we like to see it mixed up a little bit, blended a little bit, but you know, once it starts fermenting, that yeast will activate and start moving things around so right you can um we find it better maybe to try to dissolve it a little bit yeah it just seems to maybe get it be going a little faster initially. yeah right? and then we don't have to worry about trying to mix it in there and letting it sit in the bottom etc so we're using this auto siphon you know is there anything wrong with just pouring it from the jug no no nothing wrong you right. want to take that out so and we're yeah we're going to go about right? a half about half full uh, quarter gallon or maybe about 30 40 ounces something like okay. that uh pull that out for you and I think we're good there. And we'll just set that aside. You got that? I got that. Okay, so now we now have uh, some that. base juice here. We've got our uh, one six pound of sugar. We're gonna add that in, pre-measured. And just gonna try to stir it basically until, eh, generally it's a little bit more uh, uniform and melted within that cider. Now, keeping in mind here, what's, what's going to happen when we pour this back in? It's going to stir up the whole jug. It's going to stir up the whole jug, but we do remember have yeast. We still have the residual yeast oh, in here, yeah. right? Sure, sure, sure. So we're 
So by adding the sugar, the yeast will uh, work with that sugar and within a day or two, we should probably see a little bit of uh, maybe some bubbling in the surface. It's gonna be kind of a low and slow fermentation process, but uh, over the next, you know, maybe week or two, we're gonna see a very slight bubbling. And some people might ask, should I add more yeast? Generally, you don't need to, but you can. You can. Right? You can add more yeast. Yep. Uh, we, we, as a, uh, as a matter of course, uh, don't make a habit of adding yeast, no particular reason, but usually, I mean, 99% of the time, uh, this will re-ferment. You have plenty of yeast left over in that finished cider to, to ferment out that sugar. But, you know, there might be circumstances where it doesn't start fermenting. Yep. That, that would be a situation you consider adding a little more yeast to right. get it going again. And you can just monitor right. it. If it doesn't go within a couple of days, you're probably going to add some more yeast. Mm -hmm. You're probably on a stuck ferment. So, so we'll now call we, that good. Yeah, that's good. And we got it blended in, uh, and we're, you know, just simply pouring that sugar, that now sweeter cider with the sugar in it, back into the carboy. We're gonna go ahead and put our airlock on there and we'll give it a little, couple little swirls, make sure that's fully mixed. But honestly, once that starts fermenting, it'll pretty much mix itself. So we're just gonna monitor this now for the next week or two, like I said. And my guess is after that time, we're gonna have a cider that's now, rather than a 6% ABV, it's now gonna be a 7% ABV. And in our case, we thought that that's gonna make that a better cider. In fact, we've yeah. even done tests on that to say mm -hmm. we like it at 7% mm -hmm. rather than 6%. And other things you can try just randomly, uh, add honey. You could add honey, re-ferment it, and could. what do you have? Sizer. Sizer. Try Sizer too. That's good. We like Sizer. Anyway, uh, back to the barrel 44. I don't, I don't think I can let this sit any longer. So a quick recap then, Steve, what did we do today? We're fortifying cider. In this case, a wonderful example, Barrel 44. And uh, it's really a simple process. All you're doing is adding sweetness, some kind of fermentable sweetness to your cider to increase the alcohol level because you think it makes it better. That's pretty much it, right? So Good cheers. summary. Happy cider making. <laughs>